And hello, good morning to you. Lovely, bright, sunny start to the day. And God's good. Uh, let's just pray, shall we, before we look at God's word just for a few moments. Father, we do thank you for another day, another day in your presence, another day of opportunities that you avail to each and every one of us. So we pray that you direct us and guide us through the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray, Father, you would bless us, each and every one. We pray again for the sick, Lord. We do pray, Father, uh, for, for Pauline, for Helen. Uh, we pray for Joe. We pray for Violet. We pray for Herbie. We pray for Robin. And Lord, we pray for the miracles to be poured out upon their lives, Lord. We pray for everyone, Lord, who are suffering with this pandemic and the... Uh, depression and anxiety that it brings lord and we just pray god that you would move by the power of your spirit move in your church move amongst your people move amongst the lost let there be a mighty revival across this land and we ask it and give you thanks in jesus name amen amen god's good isn't he i want to read from ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13 to 18 and here's a great declaration that paul is making a great declaration to, to the church but now, it's present tense, okay, that's for you. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. The only way we've been brought near to God is by the blood, the sacrifice of Jesus. There is no other way. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Paul goes on here in Ephesians chapter 2. For he himself is our peace. Who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two so making peace and might reconcile us both to god and one body through the cross thereby killing the hostility and he came and he preached peace to you who were afar off and peace to those who were near for through him we both have access in one spirit to the father aren't these powerful words this morning great to know that we're one in christ great to know that we were once afar off and by the the, the sacrifice of jesus we've been hired it is aligned to god in one spirit the hostility that paul uh, talks about here has been broken down by the peace of christ there was a time in our lives when we were hostile towards god if you're not saved whether you know this or not here's a great truth if you're not saved you are hostile to god in other words you're against everything that god stands for now i often wonder about this and wonder how christ actually killed the hostility between us and god of course i know the answer and you know the answer but back in the world when i was a young man uh, before i became a christian i would have to say that one of my biggest stumbling blocks with the church was the apparent hypocrisy that that i saw in so-called followers of christ now I, I may have been right at that time or i may have been wrong but i used to see these people who were christians and to be honest with you i knew people who led a better life and behaved in better manners who weren't christians than than some of these christians and at at, at, at times i couldn't help feeling that the church and if you know my testimony about the presbyterians looking at me and stuff that was my perception okay and, uh, please don't slam anyone's perception because the perception to them could be very very real and it can define who the individual is and what they're thinking we have to dispel the the untruthful perceptions that people have and sometimes only the power of god can do that but i always thought that the the church was just a building of old angry finger pointing people and i didn't see any hope and i didn't see anything that appealed to me that i would be want to be part of the church and i certain didn't, there certainly didn't certainly didn't see any unity because even back in the day i heard a church is splitting up and people are falling out and so on and so on but then what happened in my life was uh, my mum got marvelously saved at a sammy workman mission down in newton abbey the big field already had a tent up and her best friend took her down to this who was a christian took her down to this meeting and my mum got saved now when my mum got saved it was she was somewhat radical as a christian she she didn't just claim to be a christian but she did her best to live her faith 
even when she was diagnosed with cancer, it never got her down. I have to say this, I never seen my mum down, even though when the prognosis and the outlook was not good. She was always witnessing, she was all, always praising. Uh, I can remember uh, at times going up to the hospital and uh, going into the little, because we were going in to see my mum and I couldn't see her, and I went into the little chapel and she was sitting praying and praying with people. Uh, uh, she was real. She was a real Christian. I think when she got saved, and I hate to say this, but she was probably, because she was my mum, she was probably the, the first real Christian I, that, that I had actually witnessed living out her faith. And I made it difficult for her. That's the honest truth. I say that to my shame. I made it difficult for her because to me she was so perfect as a Christian and I thought this shouldn't be, you know. You've got to have faults and you've got to have uh, feelings. And and she never tried at any time to hide her weaknesses and that's what being real is about. Uh, and I never felt judged by her, even though, as I've said, it disappointed her continually. But she continued to pray for me, even, uh, and, and again I share this in my testimony, one of the most poignant moments of my life under conviction was when the IUC came to my house very early in the morning. Don't know why they always came very early in the morning. Uh, I used to sleep with my clothes on because I knew they were probably coming. And I remember my mum at that time was, was going through chemotherapy for, for, for her cancer. And I remember as uh, the police trailed me down the stairs and my mum came to the bottom of the stairs and she got down onto her knees, even though she was in pain, even though she was suffering. And I was ashamedly adding to that suffering. I never forget her prayer where she said, Lord, please save our Brian. And it hit me like a bolt, but that's her being real. That's the, it wasn't put on, it wasn't show, it wasn't to uh, get her name lifted up. That's who she was. She was absolutely committed to Christ. And my mother was, was my first witness of Christ really changing a person. And as I say, remain an incredible witness right up until God called her home. Uh, and and not, I remember coming in one night to tell her I get saved and uh, she absolutely, well, she almost died, you know. But I remember on a few occasions I used to, because when you're saved, you got a lot of rough edges. You used to look at people and, you know, I, he couldn't be a Christian, they couldn't be a Christian. And my mum would have said to me, don't look at other Christians because other Christians will sometimes let you down. Great from a mother instead focus on Jesus look on Jesus and that's what I'm saying to you today because I have no doubt just let you down but who do we focus on Paul's saying we're one in Christ so let's focus on Jesus you won't find any fault with him trust in him follow him and do all you can to be like him it's a high order isn't it for us as Christians and I've heard I learned very early on coming from the background that I came from, that Jesus Christ is my peace. The peace who destroyed the hostility between us, between me and between God. As the Apostle Paul wrote in today's passage, he says, And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and peace to those who were near. In Christ we have remarkable salvation and we are one in him with other believers. Now how that pans out in our lives, I do not simply know because of the failures of other Christians and how they let us down. But let's remember, we're not to follow other Christians. We're not to follow our pastors and try and be like them or our elders or our deacons, or we're not to try and be like anyone else. Just be who you are, be like my mum, be who you are and allow God to use you. And don't look at the failures of other Christians because we all will fail but rather focus on he who never fails and he who will never let you down focus on Jesus and do your best to reflect the face of Christ in others be his hands and be his feet today may God bless you and encourage you and watch over you and I remember tomorrow night is our first prayer meeting looking forward to that okay we will be social distancing with the chairs and stuff but God bless you have a great day